So I have been playing around today with um, post-processing effects in Unreal Engine to try to get two different effects going. One of them is called cell shading, and the other one is a Laplacian filter or edge detection filter. First, let me explain what a post-processing effect is. Um, Unreal Engine, and really all game engines, <laughs> most of their job is to make it easy on you so that you don't have to think about all of the computer graphics behind things. You can just place objects and lights into a scene and then it knows how to draw them. But behind the scenes it's taking all kinds of information. For any given pixel on the screen it's got to know how far away from the camera that pixel is, information about the camera, um, it's got to calculate lighting for that pixel, it's got to understand the depth of that pixel, um, find out what object it's a part of, what material it has, are there any specular or, or rough or metallic properties basically to determine what color that pixel needs to be. And a post-processing effect or post-processing material lets you apply some math, a filter, over all of these pixels. And you have access to most of that data, how far away the pixel is, even like what the normal is of the object or in relation to the camera, that sort of thing. And this can be really powerful. You can apply depth of field effects or these effects you see here. Um, <coughs> First of all, I'll recognize this is not a very good polished version of this effect. Currently the sky is, is blacked out by the cell shader. Um, it's this mannequin material. This is just based on the default third person template. This mannequin has materials that weren't designed to work with it, um, but it's mostly just a, a proof concept here. So, <clears throat> so let me explain how the cell shader works first. Um, basically you have you can put into a level a post-process volume, which is what this pink box is. In this case, um, where the box is and how big it is doesn't matter because I've set it to unbounded, so it applies globally through the level. Uh, but you could have a post-process effect that applies just in a certain volume, just in the same way you get a light mass importance volume, that kind of thing. Um, so the goal of the cell shader is to take regular shadow information. Normally shadow information is on a scale of um, entirely lit to entirely unlit, and it's just like a linear scale with an infinite number of, of possible amounts of shadow. Um, cell shading is an attempt to kind of mimic older styles of animation, more conventional styles of animation, by splitting that. You wouldn't draw shadows as, um, for the most part, um, that gradient. They'll, they'll draw it as one shaded color and an unshaded color. Um, or maybe you have three different levels of shading or something like that. So it kind of splits the shadow information into bands. And I pulled this cell shading material, um, tutorial straight from the wiki. This is a post on the wiki about the cell shading process. I've, this, is, this effect is literally node for node, um, the same one there. So I'll link it below. It's a great resource. Um, so to achieve this, it's a little bit tricky because Unreal Engine in the materials won't just give you access to the lighting information. When you're applying a post-process effect, or I believe translucent materials, I'm not sure, you have access to this scene texture node, and that literally lets you pull information about every pixel. Um, you can set it color, depth, diffuse color, um, post-processing math, opacity and roughness, world normal, that kind of thing. So you notice there's no lighting. I can't I can't pull the shading information. So in order to do that, um, what we do is we literally take the color of the pixel and we divide it by the color of what its material is. Um, because a material, um, when drawn into the world, it, draw, it knows what color the material is and then it applies lighting information afterwards. And so using the difference between those, you can kind of cheat to get access to this lighting information. So that kind of gives us a rough idea for how shaded a given pixel is. Um, we'll clamp that and we'll kind of use it as a mask. We'll use it as a mask with this special texture here. And this texture is literally a one pixel by 128 pixel texture. And it's being used essentially as a, as a lookup table um, for like maximum shading to minimum shading. And so it's just, it applies nothing up until a certain threshold at which it applies a certain amount of shading. Um, by adjusting this texture to have three or four, five, six different bands, you would 
um, add more bands to the cell shading effect. And I'd like to do that. I'd like to have four or five um, just to give kind of a more toned down version of this effect. Um, now, there's a couple things to consider. Um, because we're kind of cheating to get access to the lighting information, it breaks a couple of things. Um, one of these things is the skybox, but um, that can be solved by just um, checking this pixel's distance from the camera, and if it's a certain distance away, literally like five million units away, you can tell it to just not apply the effect. Um, <clears throat> or you could say linearly decrease the effect to a certain distance, um, and that would solve that problem. No, no biggie. Um, but it also breaks a couple things because it assumes that you've got this uh, material and the only thing being applied to it is shading uh, materials with any kind of specularity or metallic um, effects. Um, I don't want to say they won't work because they'll work, but it will interpret the kind of metallic or specular information um, as shadow information and so it might look a little bit funny. Same thing with reflections, and same thing with emissive materials. Um, I'm not sure if emissive materials, if it will even apply the post-processing effect. I'm unsure. I'd like to use a couple of emissive materials sparingly, um, as long as it's <laughs> as long as it's just broken a little bit enough that we can fudge it. But um, so those are a couple considerations for the cell shaded post-processing effect, and that this is applied globally. The other effect can be applied per object, but this one kind of has to be applied to the entire level. So um, do with that what you will, but it looks pretty nice, I think, on the character. And this character has some specular and metallic information that it will break it a little bit, and by break it, I, I, it just kind of, it ruins the metallic or specular look. Um, simple as that. So. Um, it's pretty cool. The other effect is this Laplacian filter or edge detection or border lens effect. Um, it's a game that has a very heavy edge detection filter. Um, some people hated it and because it was so controversial um, in our version of it I'd like it along with the cell shading to be very toned down. For, for context here we're going for kind of a watercolored art style um, which is mostly going to be done with designing the models to have kind of heavy edges and designing the textures to have um, ambient occlusion maps um, with and just the textures themselves having darkened edges, most of the watercolor effect applied there and then a little bit of in-engine post-processing effect. Wash it out a little bit, um, play with the shading a little bit to make it look a little bit more hand done and then darken the edges a little bit with this effect. Um, so there's that. Now the edge detection I'm pulling from <laughs> a translated version of um, somebody's guide to mimicking anime art style, uh, which is a little bit funny, but they just have a subsection here on the Laplacian filter, and I have pulled, um, not quite node for node, I've played a little bit, removed a couple of things, changed some things to and from parameters and scalers and things, um, but it's, it's really good. I'll link that below too. Um, and it uses a couple of material functions. It's a lot of math here. Most of it I don't understand even a little bit. Um, a lot of these post-processing effects take a really deep understanding of computer graphics and what order the engine does certain operations. It, it, it applies things like lighting, post-processing effects, tonal effects um, in a certain order, and um, I have not dug into the, the behind the scenes of computer graphics here. I'm just pulling from from some examples I found online. So um, there is a entire body of knowledge um, to this materials editor and to to all these effects that, that I don't really have. But um, basically, this is just um, running these material functions. Um, this one applies the effect um, and it lightens it depending on the distance of the pixel from the camera, so that farther objects have a a lighter version of it than closer ones. It gives you options like um, down here you can change the color um, of that it applies on the edges. We can make this a, a kind of lighter gray or whatever we want really. There's a bunch of parameters here that you can apply um, to change the material to be kind of just the way you want it. Um, and it uses these scene texture um, objects. Another thing to consider here, I believe the cell shading will work fine for VR, 
the post process affects uh, the cell shading is a little bit expensive, so I've got to see what its effect on frame rate is. But um, VR games, I don't believe, tend to be CPU limited anyway, so I believe it will be okay. But I might be talking out of my butt there. So um, the edge detection filter, I'm unsure how it's going to play with stereoscopic camera, so I'll have to play with that. But Um, I won't even attempt to explain how these functions work. Um, it does some shenanigans, pulling um, pixel information and getting their depth and their normal, and then um, I believe it checks to see if the normal is um, facing basically like perpendicular to the camera. I'm, I'm unsure there. Um, and that's how it determines if it's looking at an edge or not, but I'm, I'm really not sure here. Um, but it applies it, and the interesting thing here is that it uses this custom stencil. Um, Unreal Engine lets you apply custom depth stencils, whose normal use I'm not entirely familiar with, and I have not implemented this quite correctly either, but in theory, um, it allows you to, on an object-by-object -object basis, by going in here and looking, you have to set the objects um, to render the custom depth pass, and then on that object you set the custom depth stencil value. If it's zero, which is the default, it won't apply that filter, and if you set it to one or anything else, um, then it will apply the filter, which is pretty cool. So you can turn it on and off per object. If you find that the effect uh, breaks some other material property, um, you can just turn it off. Pretty rad. And this one I think is less prone to breaking lighting, metallic, specular, um, it, it works pretty well. You can adjust the contrast, you can adjust the thickness of the lines. I kind of like it where it is, but um, playing with it will have to kind of tune it just right so that it's not overly intrusive. But um, that's basically post-process effects. You just apply these effects um, to the post-process volume. Um, it's got some um, some important things you have to consider, setting auto exposure and stuff, that's all in the Unreal Engine wiki page. Um, but down here you just add your materials um, to the post-process materials, making sure they're set to post-process. Um, and that's that. I think this will be really cool. It's got a really cool effect. I think toning down the cell shading a little bit. Um, I've got to get a real scene with some of our objects and and just see how it looks, play with the effect. It's all pretty easy to tune, so I think it could be pretty interesting.